Welcome to A2S Learning. In this session, we will discuss how human beings obtain their nutrition through digestive system. As discussed in previous session, human beings are heterotrophic and omnivorous organisms as they obtain their food from both plants and animals by means of holozoic mode of nutrition. And the nutrition in human beings takes place through human digestive system. Our digestive system consists of two groups of organs that is gastrointestinal tract and accessory digestive organs. Gastrointestinal tract is also called as alimentary canal. This alimentary canal includes mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus. The length of this tract is about 9 meters. Accessory digestive organs. Accessory digestive organs includes teeth, tongue, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. The teeth aid in the physical breakdown of food while tongue assists in chewing and swallowing. However, other accessory organs never come in direct contact with food, but they produce or store secretions that flow into the gastrointestinal tract through ducts which helps in chemical breakdown of food. Overall digestive system performs five basic processes that is ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. Now let us study these processes in detail. First one, ingestion. This process involves taking foods and liquids into the mouth. Mouth is also referred to as oral or buccal cavity. And the next process is digestion. Digestion is the process by which complex food molecules are broken down into simpler food molecules that can be absorbed by the cells of an organism. This process of digestion begins in the mouth. The food which is ingested is crushed by teeth and salivary glands present in mouth secretes saliva. Saliva consists of water, salts, mucus and an enzyme called salivary amylase. This enzyme reacts with starch and glycogen present in food and converts them to maltose. The mucus and water make the food soft and slippery and this soft mixture is called bolus which is swallowed with the help of tongue and enters the pharynx and goes down the food pipe called esophagus. Pharynx is about 12 cm long and is a funnel shaped vertical canal that acts as a passage from buccal cavity to the esophagus. Esophagus is long tubular structure which carries food from pharynx to stomach by peristaltic movement. The movement of contraction and relaxation of walls of esophagus which pushes food into the stomach is called as peristaltic movement. Now, the food is reached the stomach, which is a J-shaped large muscular organ present on the left side of abdomen. The partially digested food is further broken down into smaller pieces and churned to form a semi-solid paste by the help of gastric juice. Gastric juice is secreted by gastric glands which are present on the wall of stomach. Gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid, mucus, pepsin, and gastric lipase. Each of these enzymes have different roles to perform. Hydrochloric acid, it softens food and makes food acidic for the activation of pepsin. It converts inactive pepsinogen and pro-renin into active pepsin and renin. Pepsin Pepsin helps in digestion of proteins. It hydrolyzes proteins into soluble proteases and peptones in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Gastric lipase. This enzyme splits short chain triglycerides in fat molecules found in milk into fatty acids and monoglycerides. Mucus. The main function of mucus is to protect the inner lining of stomach from corrosion which can be caused by hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Now the partially digested food enters the small intestine which is regulated by sphincter muscle. Small intestine Small intestine is the longest part of the elementary canal. It is about 6.5 meter long in adult. 
The major events of digestion and absorption occurs in small intestine. It is divided into three regions, duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum is the shortest region which starts at the pyloric sphincter of the stomach and extends about 10 inches until it merges with jejunum. Jejunum is about 1 meter long and extends to the ileum. Ileum is the longest region of the small intestine and measures about 2 meter and joins the large intestine at the ileocecal sphincter. This small intestine receives secretions from two glands that is from liver and pancreas. Liver is the largest gland which is reddish brown in color. Liver has a soft pear shaped sac called gallbladder. This gallbladder secretes bile juice which helps to break the larger globules of fat into small globules to make the enzyme to act and digest them. Bile has no enzyme but it creates a medium for the pancreatic juice to act on food by neutralizing the acidity of the food. Pancreas Pancreas, it is the second largest gland in our body which lies below the stomach. Pancreas secretes pancreatic juice which contains digestive enzymes. That includes carbohydrate digesting enzymes called pancreatic amylase, protein digesting enzymes called trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase and elastase, triglyceride digesting enzymes in adults called pancreatic lipase and nucleic acid digesting enzymes called ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease and pancreas also produces two types of hormones called insulin and glucagon. Insulin is essential for converting glucose and storing it as glycogen. Glucagon is essential for converting glycogen to glucose. Apart from the above enzymes, intestine also secretes intestinal juice which contains various enzymes to complete digestion process. Thus, the complex carbohydrates are converted to glucose, proteins are converted to amino acids and fats are converted to fatty acids and glycerol. Once digestion is completed, the simpler molecules formed need to be absorbed by the walls of intestine which begins the next process called absorption. The end products formed such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and glycerol are soluble in water and can be easily absorbed by the walls of intestine containing blood capillaries. The inner surface of small intestine contains millions of tiny finger-like projections called villi which increases the absorptive surface area for absorption of digested food. Thus, the large surface area of small intestine helps in the rapid absorption of digested food and the food absorbed enters into our blood. Once absorption is done, the next step is assimilation. The process of using the digested food is called assimilation. The digested food is carried to all the parts of the body through blood and our body cell uses the digested food to obtain energy for growth and repair of the body. Thus, the digested food is utilized by body but what happens to the undigested food? The undigested food should be removed from the body and this process is known as ingestion. The undigested food enters the large intestine from small intestine. Large intestine is the end of alimentary canal. It is around 1.5 meter long and extends from ileum to anus. The opening from the ileum into the large intestine is guarded by fold of mucous membrane called the ileocecal sphincter which allows materials from small intestine to pass into the large intestine. Large intestine receives undigested semi-solid food and the wall of large intestine absorbs most of the water from undigested food. Large intestine consists of three parts namely cecum, colon and rectum. Cecum is a small pouch about 6 cm long with an attached twisted tube measuring about 8 cm in length called as appendix or vermiform appendix. The open end of cecum merges with colon which is the longest part of large intestine. The colon absorbs water from the undigested food and converts into fecal matter. Rectum is a large part of large intestine which stores the undigested food for some time and then it is expelled outside as feces or stool by the opening called anus. Anus is guarded 
by internal anal sphincter of smooth muscle which is involuntary and an external anal sphincter of skeletal muscle which is voluntary normally these sphincters keep the anus closed except during the elimination of feces the act of expelling the feces is called as ejection or defecation thus this process completes digestion to summarize today we have studied five processes that is ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection thank you for watching for more videos please do like and subscribe to my channel large intestine consists of three parts namely cecum colon and rectum cecum is a small pouch about 6 cm long with a attached twisted tube measuring about 8 cm in length called as appendix or vermiform appendix the open end of cecum merges with colon which is the longest part of large intestine the colon absorbs water from the undigested food and converts into fecal matter rectum is a large part of large intestine which stores the undigested food for some time and then it is expelled outside as feces or stool by the opening called anus anus is guarded by internal anal sphincter of smooth muscle which is involuntary and an external anal sphincter of skeletal muscle which is voluntary Normally these sphincters keep the anus closed except during the elimination of feces. The act of expelling the feces is called as ejection or defecation. Thus this process completes digestion. To summarize today we have studied five processes that is ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. Thank you for watching. For more videos please do like and subscribe to my channel.